Hi, my name is Pauline. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the tracking company that I started a little bit uh, over a month ago. So uh, I'm hoping that by the end of this video I have given you a little bit about a little bit of background about this company. I will be telling you on how to set up your own tracking company, what things you need to be looking out for and what do you need to put together to make this uh, fully ready to function company. I will also be letting you know of the connections you need to be able to make to get this also rolling out properly. I will also be telling you of how to prepare for over the road transportation. The earnings that we've been able to make so far in the one month period and also what next for this company. So thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to subscribe and like this video. I will be getting in the video just right this second. All right, first of all, when we talk about the background, this company was started, you know, the idea was harbored a little bit while ago when we were inspired by this company called Seagate. So when I had just come into this country, I was looking for ideas on how to get started because I am somebody who just likes money, not money is not a bad thing. So I like to make money. So I've always been a self-employed person on the side in some way or sort. So coming to this company country, I needed to find avenues on how to be able to make an extra buck. One time I landed on this company called Seagate. It's a company made of, I think three or four Kenyans that started out from one truck and they grew it to this multi-millionaire company. That was so inspiring for me, them being just our neighbor to Uganda, but also being immigrants. And you know, the small beginnings they started with just inspired me and showed me this is something that I can definitely be able to put my foot in and see it out to the next level. So that is just an inspirational story. But then when it comes to the when of when I actually put this into practice was in 2020. So a little bit before the whole COVID started, that was in sometime February, I started to, you know, put the paperwork together to register this company. And the reasons were basically to make money, to be able to inspire somebody, to be able to prove this to myself, but also to get some of the things that I need in my life paid off. There are very many dreams that a girl has and if this is something that could help me get them realized, I was definitely going to go for it. So when it comes to setup, I will tell you that setting up this company has been gradual it is something that you will be all going over a little bit one after the other the company needs to be set up in a particular structure first of all you will need to register with your state you need to register the company think of a name that you think brings all the good luck and you think you know it's gonna be the name of your company you will name it abc tracking or abc freight abc logistics whatever you want go register it with the state pay those dues and also at this point you will have to go and register it with the fmcsa the federal motor carrier safety administration this is a body that governs you know regulates the transportation industry in the united states the next thing that has to follow with that is filing the form 150 that's a little form that you file during that process there's a lot of filings that will go into the tracking you know setting up your tracking company you will also need to file the boc3 however you can't file it yourself so i didn't file this myself i went through a process agent and this is someone you have to get for your company the process agents in this case are people who are going to be working to represent you in case your company has to be taken to court or the paper filings that you have to do you will not be doing them but these process agents does them for you because they represent you in each and every state that your company is going to be operating 
And in this case, my company was registered to be working interstate, meaning it's not going to be only concentrated in Massachusetts where we are located, but it's going to be working interstate going from one state to another. And at this point, I will tell you that we've been able to go through, I think, 90% of the states of America, and that was pretty cool. But going back to setting up your company, you will also need to find insurance. Insurance is very key to this process because without having insurance, you are not going to be uh, legalized or your DOT, which is something that you will obtain from the FMCSA, will not be activated. So they will only activate it when they see that you have finished filing for insurance. And this, you know, factors come and play you know one off of the other insurance cannot happen without you having a truck that means that you're gonna be collaborating a few you know factors here and there meantime as you're registering with the fmcsa to get your dot and mc number issued you cannot get them activated without insurance but then to get insurance you must be having a truck to get a truck you have to go and begin to look out for a good deal a good deal could be from dealers could be from regular people who you know one-on-one -on -one or companies that are selling out their trucks so you want to get that deal rolling and start with negotiations here and there as the other things are also processing the truck you might have cash to pay for it but if you don't have cash but you have a little bit of deposit it means you're also going to start having conversations with your bank or your lender whoever it is that is going to be helping you with that so as that is rolling i hope you're seeing the multifaceted where this whole system is working while you're talking to the blender to give you money to buy the truck you are also processing and trying to negotiate for insurance and insurance can only be given to an asset that you've already acquired or you've already you know registered so when you get so this is how it worked for me i was in the registration with the fmcsa and at a certain point i couldn't get the dot activated because of insurance in that time i was speaking with the dealers this case i used enterprise truck sales i was dealing with enter enterprise trying to see which truck is going to be good for me and how it works and we were going in for test drives and all of those things they were also fixing it up for anything because this was a used vehicle they were fixing it up and trying to service it getting it ready for the road meantime we were also processing a funding with my bank so as soon as the funding came through the truck sales people went and registered the truck in my company names for me and when that was all set they gave me the go ahead to secure actually it was the other way around because you can't register a vehicle without having insurance so I to speak with the insurance guys to get me the quotations rolling such that I could get the truck registered after it is registered you are going to begin to look into drivers these are all things that are going to help you to get this whole thing set up properly to be able to become operational and this whole process will pretty much take take you between four to six weeks to get everything set up and you know activated and ready to roll drivers in this case are going to be people because in this case when i started out i was starting out with a box truck and it doesn't need you to have a cdl everyday people with a driver's license class d can drive it so you get to get to hire drivers if you're not going to drive it yourself but if you are going to hire drivers here's a thing you have to look into you have to take somebody who has a minimum of two years of driving record in my case driving history of two years but also you want to them to have a clean driving record the reasons for this is because their driving history is going to affect how much your insurance premium is going to be so while you're in that process you have to make sure all of these things are aligning because 
it affects your bag at the end of the day so when you are trying to register for insurance they'll be asking you who is going to be driving the truck and you must have somebody lined up who is having a good driving record who is responsible and you know they're going to be good drivers for your company and then you're not going to be paying high premiums because of someone's recklessness all right when you switching to the next thing is we want to talk about the connections there are a lot of connections you're going to have to do when you are setting up your trucking company or when you are starting to get this thing operational first the first connection is going to be people who are already in the business why do i say you have to make connections with these people because they're going to show you how this thing you are trying to enter in works where not to you know make mistakes where to buy trucks where to get insurance what kind is good which kind of trucks to be buying there's so many different types the different engines you know which states to try to go which routes you can go for it's just somebody who is already having experience of the industry you're going into trying to show you where to you know jump and not to jump the other connection you will need is to have a good seller of trucks because it is very important this is like uh the anchor of the business this is like the foundation this is where everything rotates the equipment you're going to be using you want to get a good equipment so trying to outsource good deals and people who are going to be honest when they're selling you these trucks telling you the upfront the works that have been done on these machines if you are buying them second hand is very crucial so having a good relationship and trying to outsource the best sellers of trucks is also crucial uh, the other connection that we had to do was to get a dispatcher the dispatcher in this case we were almost ready to get rolling but we had to find a dispatcher who is going to find us loads and in this case we got a good one who was actually offering to do the factoring for us factoring if you are not going to be using a dispatcher and you're going to be going out to look for the loads yourself you will need to find a factoring agency a factoring company so ideally when you deliver a load sometimes after you've delivered and get, gotten the rate, rate of confirmation if you went through the traditional channels you would have to wait between 60 to 90 days to be paid here a factoring company will help you to get paid in the next 24 hours at a percentage it is usually two to three depending on where you get a good deal but we got a dispatcher who was offering um factoring too and that was good for us they were charging us i think 13 percent and that was good so the next thing is preparing for the road how do you prepare for the road to get you know the maximum results out of this trucking company you've probably started or you're going to be starting so this is how we prepared for it we had to get an eld an eld is a device for tracking uh your work hours as by the FMCSA rules or regulations and the transportation, the DOT, Department of Transportation regulations, you have to have a track record of how you have been driving, you know, on the road or how you've been actively on duty. You can't go past 10 hours of, I think it's actually 11 hours of active duty. You can't be driving out 11 hours straight so it is usually you know scaled between eight and then you take a 30 minute break and then you take the other five hours driving uh which puts it at about 11 or 10 hours because if you put the 30 minutes then it becomes actually 10. so you must be taking breaks and you have to have a record of this they have now become you know technically savvy you know the technology has helped to bring up about apps that helps to track this performance and you can always log in your work hours we went with keep tracking and they've been working with us so well that is something you have to have before you go on the road these will come with a subscription but you can always work that out and ask for a good deal when you are negotiating for this the other thing is you need a gps it is not going to be very 
you know smart of you to use your normal gps to drive a truck you will need to get a gps specifically for trucks because they are low bridges in certain areas that you can't go through there are some roads that are weak that can't support uh, the weight of trucks so there's a gps specifically designed for trucks that you will have to go to buy we went to best buy to buy this for us and it was working pretty well for us the other thing when you're preparing for the road is to have all your paperwork ready in a nice file in your truck usually when you are in your normal car you have your driver's license and you have your registration when you are going into the trucking business you need to have your medical card you as a driver you need to have it handy you need to have the registration of the truck you need to have um the boc i think you need to have a, a few copies of stuff i'll make a video for the paperwork that you need to have in the truck such that you can have safety and be confident that if you ever pulled over you have all this paperwork ready to be you know presented to the officer who pulls you over also the this is just on the side note but it is actually very important you need to have extra clothing and snacks because the drive is like eight hours straight or ten hours and you're driving sometimes trans day trans night you need to have snacks to be snacking on and drinks and change of clothes because you will need to change clothes as you are in operations that is if you've started to drive so setting this up and having all of these things and tissue and paper towels just a few toiletries that you think you might need in the truck to make you comfortable is also something you can look into when you're preparing to get on the road okay so let's get down to the earnings all right guys so here is the projections for that first month we started from new hampshire to la and we did that load for 2700 and remember the dispatcher used to take 13 percent and that was fees for finding us loads but also factoring factoring is when they give you cash in the next few days other than waiting for the companies that we transport for which spend about 60 to 90 days to be able to pay you after their deductions we see that the balance was about 2349 dollars and that is what we did that week that was a pretty good you know day we were happy we did this load i think in uh, i think one day it was yeah one day 24 hours we drove the entire time 24 hours and I think there was an extra three hours for loading and offloading and you know all of those uh, break times and stuff anyway so that is what we did so when we go to week two here week two we did two jobs and we got from Texas to Oregon and that was 4,000 and then we went from idaho to pennsylvania and that was four thousand and two hundred dollars putting us at a total of eighty two thousand eighty two thousand two hundred dollars for that week again the dispatcher deducted their 13 percent which was about a thousand and sixty six dollars and that left us with seven thousand thirteen seven thousand one hundred and thirty four dollars in our bank account all right so there goes week two now we come to week three and we did three jobs that time the jobs were from pennsylvania to tennessee and that was just a short route which was about a thousand and a hundred dollars then we came from tennessee to wyoming and then we did 2600 i remember we got stuck in wyoming for almost i think there were like three days without getting a lord that was a hard time i questioned my life choices during that time anyway so we came from uh, colorado we had to drive out to colorado to get a job and it took us to california and that was 
a $1,750 job. And that week we grossed about $5,450. The dispatcher again took their cut of 13% and that was $788. $708.50 and that left us with $4,741.50. Then we went to week four. Week four, we had put in a request to take us back to Massachusetts because we wanted to go and take a break. And <clears throat> during that week, we started getting routes moving back to the east. So that was California to Georgia, and that was a route for 4,100. And then there was Georgia to Illinois, and that was 1,400. We had Illinois to Connect Cut, which is quite close by here, which is 1,500. The gross was 7,000. Again, dispatcher took the 13%, and it left us with seven, sorry, nine. Hundred and ten dollars, which was the dispatcher fee, and we was left with six hundred and ninety dollars. You can see that these pricings have been fluctuating week after week. This week, when we started, I think we started within uh, almost closing. We are always paid on a Friday. Alright guys, so the expenses were usually the dispatcher as we've been seeing. We also always had diesel. We had diesel, we had DEF which is diesel engine fluid, we had meals and we had hotel stays, especially for the weekends. I also had to pay the driver, so we had driver payroll going on so when we come to the expenses in total it usually took 63 percent out of the overall payment of each load so when we do a gross income for the month which was twenty three thousand three hundred and fifty dollars for the entire month we see the expenses were going over fourteen thousand seven hundred and ten dollars and that left a net income of about eight thousand six hundred and thirty nine dollars this was a pretty good amount if that is what it was exactly but i need you to remember there's something called insurance and there's something called the car note you know or the vacant loan at this point at this point so ours was about is about 1900 roughly and this other one is about 63 66 so is about 663 dollars so all of that was taken out of this net income so i guess at this point it's not actually that so if i calculate this that puts it at around a total of about let's see eight six three nine and fifty cents minus 1900 minus 663 that puts me at about six thousand and seventy six dollars net income um my take for this i think it's pretty okay but we can definitely do better because i need to see a little bit more when it comes to the earnings of the vehicle considering it was a team driving i think this was a little bit on the lesser side us having been two drivers on the road and you know generally looking at things i think this is an amount that can be definitely be worked on and going forward that's what we're gonna do and we shall ask the gods to be with us
when it comes to uh, going forward. We want to be able to see that we can boost our earnings past what we earned during that time because I think it is something that we can definitely see that it is possible to get more out of this business and trying to learn a little bit more. So the tip that I was if you have reached to the end of this video it kudos to you thank you so much remember to subscribe to this channel and the tip that i promised you is when you are registering for your company guys this is very 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 important set up a dummy account to register your company with because why do i say a dummy and not even the company account use a dummy account this is just gonna be for registration purposes is because you are going to be hit with spam emails i am receiving like literally in the hundreds of emails every day and for some reason i don't know how it happened there was two cases when i was being asked for an email both the company and my personal email to as a point of contact and i stupidly put in my personal email because i thought when they were asking for a contact email i put in my personal email and i'm receiving tons and tons of spam email this has caused me a lot of headache and i'm missing out on important emails because i have to be deleting these things all the time i'm literally in my phone trying to delete emails all the time so that's quite pretty important for you to look out for and not go into that trap all right thank you so much i will see you in the next one